to the skin. Did you see? Did I see what? Nothing, sir. In his bed, the writer rolled over and lay quite still. I lay He had done some hard living and his heart fluttered. I have done some hard living. The idea got into his mind that he would sometime die unexpectedly. My heart flutters. I know I will die in an unexpected way. But I'm alive in my His body was old and not of much use anymore, but something inside of him was altogether young. Perfectly still he lay, turning matters over in his mind, trying to make sense of what had happened to him. He had counted the world's finest writers among his friends. He had been a mentor to many. I'm just like a bird, he had given the blessing of success to the best known writer in our time, but the young writer had betrayed him so deeply that he could not bear to think about it. The younger writer's work would be remembered and revered, while his own best work, The Book of the Grotesque, remained unpublished. The writer never found the courage to seek a publisher, but I saw the book once, and it made an indelible impression on my mind. In the beginning, when the world was young, and though now he blended one place with another in his memory, the places where his life changed course still haunt his mind. But no one, no one, no one really knows this thing is true. Everything springs out of nothing and flies forward to infinity. Who could figure this out? The one who made this shit. And he, and he alone, is going to get it. It's true. A little philosophy makes you an atheist. 
but go deeper and your mind moves to religion. When you look at the chain of things, you start talking providence. You start talking deity. He had known people, many people, known them in a peculiarly intimate way that was different from the way in which you and I know people. When he wrote about them now, he did not know if he was drawing from memories or dreams. People too had blent in his mind, some blossoming, silent, stark and beautiful. Others adrift, passing into oblivion, utterly lost to him. Grotesque. All of the men and women the writer had ever known had become grotesque. Although Elizabeth Walker was still young, some obscure disease had taken the fire from her. When she was able to be about, she did the work of a chambermaid among beds soiled by the slumbers of fat traveling men. Her husband, Tom Walker, tried to put the wife out of his mind. The place in which he had begun his working life so hopefully was now a mere ghost of what a boarding house should be. Tom Walker had always thought of himself as a successful man although nothing he had done had ever turned out successfully. As he went spruce and business-like through the streets of Chicago Heights, he sometimes stopped and turned quickly about, as though fearing that the spirit of the house and of the woman would follow him even here. Chicago Heights is an excerpt that stands 33 miles outside the shadows of the skyscrapers of the city that is its namesake. City gives way to country here. Residents of the Heights live under the flight path of a constant stream of jets departing Midway Airport. I 
living this way Cause the trees have got to come The grotesques were not at all horrible. There was the mother, the father, the son, the teacher. One of them was a man of God. Pastor Curtis Hartman was a man filled with the spirit, but embattled by forces he could not comprehend or control. Give me the strength and courage to do your work, Lord. Amen. In, in the beginning, when the world was young, there were a great many thoughts, but no such thing as a truth. Will be here in a few days, so I'd like us to make sure to keep the house clean. Yeah, yes, dear, that's that's very nice. You need to go downtown and look for a job. Nathan, I know you hear me, son. Good night. the truth of virginity and the truth of passion, of thrift and profligacy, of carelessness and abandon. Hundreds and hundreds are the truths and they are all beautiful. And then the people come and each one of them as they appear snatches up one of the truths. And some who are quite strong snatch up a dozen of them. When a man takes a truth and calls it his truth and tries to live his life by it, he becomes a grotesque and the truth he embraces becomes a falsehood. It is the truths that make the people grotesque. Pastor wondered, even as he was carried by the Spirit of the Lord, if the neighbor woman could hear him, 
if his voice was carrying a message into her soul. Someday he felt he would reach her, yet he knew she was very far gone in her sin. There's nothing for you here. You need to go downtown. We must take hold of the devil's desire. We must break our lust like we break in a new In the soul horse. of the minister, Seizing a struggle the awoke. From wanting to reach the Why ears of Kate Swift, and through his dirt. sermons to delve into her soul, he began to want to also look again at her elegant figure. It was a mission. You know, I came here to start something new. I can't. You know, I, there's a reason I. Well, something else, you know. There's a woman coming. I missed Tracy. She did not come in my time. You might be the woman. Oh, it would be like fate to stand here in your presence for once on a night like this when I, you were just only a child. All of Nathan Walker's experiences with girls had been furtive. He believed he was in love with Helen White, a girl he knew in his church. He knew Louise Trayon better, as she had stayed for a time in New Walker House. Nathan feared women a little. The fear sprang from a story told him by Mr. Wash Williams, another boarder in his house. Heard you were married. Suppose you were and your wife's dead, huh? All women are dead. My mother, your mother, the mothers we make, 
Rumors had it that Wash Williams was such a tortured soul that he had set fire to himself. To Nathan, he seemed at one moment hideous, and the next handsome, and one moment blindly hateful, and the next eloquent, poetic. On the day I got married, I got a promotion and a raise. We got a house, and I was going to pay it off over several years. I was in love. I saved my virginity until after I got married. Digging in your dirt again, are you? Seats. I loved her. Me, I, I don't claim not to be a fool. I still love her. Watch your hands, honey. I just took a shower. I found out she had lovers. Three loves, three bastard lovers. I didn't say a goddamn thing. I just took her to her mother's house. I had money in the bank and I gave her that. Her mother sent for me. She called me on the phone and told me to come to her house in Rockford. It, my body was just trembling. I hated the man that I thought I had wronged her. I was tired of living alone and I just wanted her back. I thought if she just reached out and touched me with her hand, I'd faint. I ache to forgive. Then her mother made her. Her mother made her. all about the woman, though she's never crossed my path. I know all about her struggles, her defeats. Out of her defeats has been born a new quality in woman. I have a name for it. I call her Cal. Made up the name when I was a true dreamer, before my body became vile. It means the quality of being strong, to be loved. Be callous, little one. Dare to be strong and courageous. That is the road. Venture anything. Be brave enough to dare to be loved. Be something more than man or woman. Be Kala. <laughs> well, I haven't lost my faith. I just, uh, I just brought to the place where I realized my faith is it's not going to do anything for me. The days are long here. Although no one in Chicago Heights would have suspected it, K. Swift's life had been very adventurous. It was still adventurous. 
Day by day, she worked in the classroom. But on weekends, she was 30 miles north on the streets of Chicago, walking alone. Hope and desire fought within her. In the five years since she had come back from her travels to settle in the Heights and become a teacher, she had been compelled to go downtown and walk half through the night. In her classrooms at Lincoln State University, she was cold, stern, and far too earnest, yet in an odd way, very close to her students. dying. Nothing. Who are you going to be? Malcolm? Martin, Reverend Wright, Mr. Wrong. Kate had known her share of men, but their company generally tended to make her miss her solitude. Nathan Walker has written something brilliant. Kate Swift's mind was ablaze with thoughts of Nathan Walker. And something he had written as a student, she thought she had recognized the spark of genius and wanted to blow on the spark. Nathan, why don't you come up here and share some of your story? It's called The Torrents of Summer. <clears throat> Three days is too got damn long for a boy not to visit his sick mother. when you're spoken to. What the hell's bothering you? I just want to be all right. You'll get over it. You're not a fool. You're Tom Walker's son. And you'll wake up. really not like that. It's just as dull as can be. Actually, I'm only doing it until I move back to Michigan, and then I'm moving back in with my parents. You know, we all need something magical in our lives. I hope you get your magic. In her younger years, Elizabeth had her share of adventures, many of them in a forest of Christmas trees in summer storage under Pastor Hartman's church. Someday, I'm going to travel around the world just like you. Of course you will. It feels so good. Her adventures ended 
with Tom Walker. What's wrong? It's like you suddenly became a little boy. Why don't you go too? <laughs> I'm going to get out of here. I don't know where I'm going to go or what I'm going to do, but I'm going away. So, you're going to go downtown and make money. I guess I can't make you understand. I wish I could, but there's just no use. I just, I just want to go away and watch people and think. I want to be a writer. I suppose it won't happen for a year or two, but I've been thinking about it. For sure, I'll go away and I'll be a writer. Louise! You think you're better than me? No, Louise. I, I think you're real pretty.
Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. It would be wrong for you to think of your minister as a man set aside and intended by nature to be lead a blameless life. I am beset by all the temptations that assail you. I've been tempted. I have surrendered to temptation. But it was only by the hand of God placed beneath my head that I was raised up. And as he raised me, so also shall he raise you. Amen. Do not despair, for in your hour of sin, turn your eyes to the sky, and you will be saved again and again and again. The pastor pleaded now with God to give him the power to ignore his window and to stay with his servant in his hour of need. If you want to be a writer, you've got to talk to your reader. Keep it simple. Draw on nature. Think in circles, not in lines. Plot does not matter. Character is everything. Writing is easy. All you do is sit and stare at a blank screen until the drops of blood form on your forehead. A writer must possess the courage to express what others fear to express. Make love to words. Make love to me. Oh, Miss Swift. You think you're better than me? living passion and beauty in a woman. He has no right to forget he is an animal. I will see this woman. And I will let 
myself think the thoughts I've never dared to think. You don't have to leave Chicago Heights. You have to make Chicago Heights leave you. What's the use? It'll be 10 years before you begin to understand. Nathan, you're a student. No. <laughs> Professor Swift, what, what's wrong with you? Shit! Oh my god! God beyond human. He's so mysterious. The Virgin Mary appeared to me in the body of a naked woman. Do you know Kate Swift? She might not be aware of it, but she is a messenger of God, bearing a message of truth. Do you know what that means? I'm delivered. I'm delivered. Have no fear. I see you in church, son. Nathan Walker rolled about in the bed on which had laid in the afternoon hugging the pillow and thinking thoughts of Kate Swift. The words of the pastor, who he thought had gone suddenly insane, rang in his ears. His eyes stared about the room, and he tried to understand what had happened. Over and over he turned the matter in his mind. Hours passed, and he began to think it must be time for another day to come. Do you know Kate Swift? She might not be aware of it, but she is a messenger of God, bearing a message of truth. Then he slept, and in all Chicago Heights, he was the last soul on that summer night to go to sleep. He assured himself that of memory and the moment, those two distinct realms in time, memory ranked first. No matter how fragmented and grotesque, memory is a colander of experience through which only manifestations of the truth may pass.
The story of Dr. Reefy and its association with Mrs. Elizabeth Walker is a very curious story. It is delicious. Like the twisted little apples that grow in the backyards of Chicago Heights. The apples have been taken from the trees by children. On the trees are only a few gnarled apples that they have rejected. One nibbles at them and they are delicious. Into a little round place at the side of the apple has been gathered all of its sweetness. Only a few know the sweetness of the twisted apples. After his wife's death, Dr. Eli Reefy worked all day, every day. Along in his home office on Black Hawk Drive, near Lincoln Highway, the therapist worked ceaselessly, building up something that he himself destroyed. Little pyramids of truth he erected, and after erecting, knocked them down again, that he might have the truths to erect other pyramids. Dr. Reefy had a habit of writing little truths about people on scraps of paper. He stuffed the truths in the pockets of his one tweed jacket. When the pockets were filled, he dumped them out upon the floor. Mrs. Elizabeth Walker and Dr. Reefy began what we shall characterize as an odd courtship on the summer afternoon. When he met her, she was already fatally ill, but she came to life in his presence. I had come to a point in time in my life when prayer became necessary, so I invented God's. And I prayed to them. I didn't say my prayer in words, nor did I kneel down. I sat perfectly still in my chair. It was an experience that I really can't explain, though I suppose it happens to men and women in all sorts of places. Always there was something Elizabeth sought blindly, passionately, the hidden wonder in life, and all the babble of words that fell from the lips of the men who opened her presence in that perpetual Christmas under the church, she was trying to find what would be for her the true word. exactly who I hoped and wanted to be. You must not try to make love definite. It's a divine accident of life. If you try to be sure about it, you're going to be disappointed. I went to bed last night and I started thinking thought about you growing up with all these people, these drifters passing through the house. I'm just fine, Father. I'm worried about you, Elizabeth. <sighs> Marriage isn't what it's cracked up to be. Don't do it. You'd be stuck here in Chicago Heights the rest of your life. And then I was married and just didn't work out at all. Maybe I just knew too much about him before then, and maybe I just found out way too much about him during that first night. I'm such a damn 
fool. It wasn't Tom Walker that I wanted. It was marriage. I didn't like him. He always smelled like paint. Look, I'm not a hoe. But there were so many stories around Chicago Heights about me. It was cloudy one day and, and a storm was coming. Black clouds made the green of the trees and the grass stand out so that the colors, the colors hurt my eyes. Thoughts began to come and I, I, I just wanted to get away from them. So I began to pedal harder and I wanted to go at a terrible speed. I wanted to get out of town. I wanted to get out of my clothes. I wanted to get out of my marriage. I wanted to get out of my body. I, I wanted out of everything. And I pedaled hard. I pedaled hard. I pedaled so hard that my legs began to hurt. And when I couldn't pedal anymore, I got off. And I fell. I, I fell on the ground and it, it I just wanted to run away from everything. But I wanted to run towards something too. Don't you see, darling? Don't you see how it was? I cried all the way home. The thing that had come to life in her as she talked to Dr. Reefy died suddenly. Along the street she went, with the blood still singing in her body, crying so hard that she feared she might fall. The sick woman spent the last few months of her life hungering for death. Elizabeth faded one day in August, in the year when her son Nathan was becoming a man, but was still so young that he had but little sense of what was happening. Only time would give him that. Before she died, Elizabeth lay paralyzed for six days, unable to speak or move, and with only her mind and her eyes alive. <laughs> for three of the six days, she struggled, thinking of her boy, trying to say some few words in regards to his future, and in her eyes, there was an appeal so touching that all who saw it kept the memory of the dying woman in their mind for years.
The body under the sheets was long and in death looked young and graceful. To the boy, it was unspeakably lovely. He began to think that the body before him was breathing and alive. In the dining room with his dead mother, the young man began to have thoughts. His mind hungered for life the way his mother's mind had hungered for death. He closed his eyes. That's not my mother in there. <laughs> That's not my mother in there.
The young man, riding downtown, began to think, but he did not think of anything very big or dramatic. Things like his mother's death, his eventual departure from Chicago Heights, the uncertainty of his future life. The serious and larger aspects of his life did not come into his mind. He thought of little things. Nathan Walker closed his eyes and leaned back in his seat. One looking at him would not have thought him particularly sharp. He stayed that way for a long time, and when he aroused himself later and again looked out of the train window, the excerpt of Chicago Heights had disappeared, and his life there had become but a background on which to paint the dreams of his manhood. Should never cry. 